It's fine, right? It's fine. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> How can I dress up mac and cheese to make it a filling main dish with mostly pantry items? Betty's answer, can can casserole. I'm Melinda and I'm cooking my way through Betty Crocker's 1971 recipe card library. Today we're making Can Can Casserole. This is from the Hurry Up Main Dishes section and this card was recommended to me by one of my viewers, John. John makes this recipe all the time, but he's changed a few things along the way. So I'm gonna follow John's recipe and not Betty's. I'll walk you through the differences. So the recipe calls for a can of cheddar cheese soup, um, a can of julienne carrots. I am gonna take John's recommendation and use frozen mixed vegetables here. Um, it also calls for rosemary, pepper, and parsley. John suggests just using Italian seasoning, so I'm gonna do that. Um, it calls for canned tuna, of course, and then canned mac and cheese. Um, John says to use the box of mac and cheese, and I think that we should use the box as well. It's just Kraft mac and cheese, it's a classic. So we're gonna whip up a box of mac and cheese, and then, of course, French's fried onion rings on top. So let's get started. All right, so the first step, of course, is making the boxed mac and cheese. So um, I went ahead and I boiled the noodles for seven to eight minutes, drained, and then now we're gonna add the butter, milk, and cheese sauce mix. <laughs> so we have some milk here. We have four tablespoons of butter. This is kind of a classic situation. You gotta get the butter under the noodles so it melts. <laughs> so the heat of the noodles melts the butter. <laughs> and then we got our cheese sauce packet. You know, box mac and cheese was actually born from this desire to keep cheese longer. Um, the powdered cheese is dehydrated so that you can um, reintroduce the fat, the, the milk and the butter separately um, while you're cooking it. It was um, Chicago cheese salesman James L. Kraft who was awarded the first patent for processed cheese. That was back in 1917. And in 1937, Kraft debuted boxed macaroni and cheese, which originally sold for 19 cents. Oh, look at that orange stuff. Oh, that's the good orange stuff. American consumers fell in love with Kraft mac and cheese during World War II because you could get two boxes for a single ration point. This is the aroma of my childhood. <laughs> All right, time to assemble our can-can casserole. All right, to assemble, we start by putting tuna in the bottom of our casserole dish. Spread tuna in an ungreased casserole dish, so that's what we're doing. The recipe calls for nine ounces of tuna. I think technically this might only be eight. Oh no, this is 10 ounces. So I'm just gonna try to break this up a bit with a fork. The title of this card is actually called um, Tuna with Noodles, and it has two recipes on it. I'm just making the can-can casserole today because the other recipe was for tuna noodles almondine and required um, Betty Crocker brand noodles almondine, like boxed pasta mix. And I, that definitely doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> so I wasn't able to try that recipe, but at least I'm trying the can-can casserole. All right, so the tuna's in the bottom, nice and even. Now we're gonna top it with the mac and cheese. Yummy. Then we're gonna top it with the mixed vegetables. We're gonna throw mixed vegetables all over the apartment. I'm assuming these go on frozen. I don't actually know for sure. I think that's what I think that's what John would do. I like the mixed vegetables because I feel like that's a better kind of assortment than just carrots, right? You get some green stuff in there. Now the can would have been 16 ounces and this whole bag is 16 ounces. I guess I'll do the whole thing. Why not? It's fine, right? It's fine. Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> then the next step is to take our cheddar cheese soup. Oh boy. <laughs> I've never, um, never used this before. It looks like nacho cheese basically. <laughs> And what the recipe called for was that you mix the cheddar cheese soup with the leftover 
um, third of a cup of liquid that was gonna come out of the carrots. I think to get this like watered down, I might just add a third of a cup of water since we don't have the carrot liquid from that can. And then I'm also gonna add um, a teaspoon of the Italian seasoning. Here's a third of a cup of water going in. I think that will help just kind of get this soup down into the cracks and crevices of the casserole. I feel like this is iconic Betty Crocker. Like when you think mid-century Betty Crocker recipe, <laughs> you're thinking about a canned can casserole. You're thinking about using canned soup, frozen veggies. <laughs> this is convenience cooking at its finest. Mmm, yum. <laughs> now it says to pour the mixture on top. So we'll see how that goes. Is my casserole dish too small? Yes. <laughs> Will this probably get all over the bottom of my oven? Yes. So this is gonna go in a 375 oven for 30 minutes and then we're gonna top it with the French fried onions. All right, so it's been in the oven for 30-ish minutes. It smells good, but it doesn't seem like anything's happened. Like it's not really bubbling or anything, but maybe that's okay. <laughs> now we're gonna add the French's onions on top and put it back in the oven for five more minutes. Trying to be delicate about it because it's already so <laughs> over full. I don't want to go all the way to the edge because I want it to look like one of those photographs of a casserole where you can like see the casserole. All right, back in the oven for five more minutes. All right, it's out of the oven. It's time for the moment of truth, a bit of a taste. Let's dig in. You know, the putting the soup on top was an interesting um, re requirement because it, it kind of formed a, a crust <laughs> that it's pretty interesting. Okay, I have to get enough to get all the way down to the tuna, you know? You gotta really have a kind of a... I'm gonna go in this way. Okay. I don't want to make a mess. I just released the smell of the tuna. <laughs> oh boy. Let's give this can can casserole a taste. I will say that it looks pretty fun, right? It's like really colorful, the mac and cheese, the vegetables. Okay, I do see I got some tuna flakes at the bottom. So let's just get a scoop of tuna, mac and cheese, and veggie all in one bite. Mmm. okay. <laughs> French fried onions really make everything better. <laughs> you know what I mean? They really just like put everything over the top. Like just that little crunch, that little crispy crunch. Yeah, this is good. What I like about it is that the tuna, I didn't get a lot of tuna on my plate, but the tuna kind of permeated the mac and cheese so that every bite has like a little hint of tuna without being overpowering. And then some bites you actually get like a little bite of tuna. I think the vegetables are really great. I love like the green beans are really like crispy, which I like. Mm. Yeah, this is really good. Thank you, John, for recommending this. I'm glad I gave this casserole a try. All right, can can casserole. This was really fun. I feel like um, just a really colorful, easy dish that like pa is packed with veggies and you get the protein from the tuna, like a really great main dish made with like mostly stuff from the pantry. And I think like really like fancied up a box of mac and cheese, right? Which was my goal. But I think the one thing that I thought was a little odd about it, and maybe this is my fault, but the interior didn't feel that well cooked. I was really expecting it to be more bubbly when I took it out of the oven. And when I was eating it, it was like kind of room temperature in the middle, <laughs> which is fine. Everything was pre-cooked, but I think maybe I just should have used a more flat casserole dish with more surface area. Cause I, I when I scooped it out, it kind of just fell apart on the plate and it was just like, a plate of mac and cheese versus I thought a casserole you could like kind of slice better and get like a chunk out of, you know what I mean? <laughs> but other than that, I think it turned out really well. It's really tasty, really easy. I think I'm gonna give it four out of five red spoons. Okay, back in the box. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please check out the most surprising casserole dish I've ever made. It's called bologna biscuits with vegetables. I'll put the link somewhere around here. Um, otherwise, Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe and until next time, happy homemaking.